What does it mean when a fault that has been quiet suddenly shudders back to life? Can a seemingly minor tremor of just over magnitude 4 be the first whisper before a much louder seismic roar? Is this a random slip of earth, or is the crust beneath the East Bay reawakening, to remind residents that the Hayward Fault has not forgotten its violent past? These are the questions that scientists, seismologists, and ordinary residents of the Bay Area are now grappling with, after the Hayward Fault produced a magnitude 4.3 earthquake east-southeast of Berkeley, followed by a swarm of smaller tremors within a day. The quake struck at a depth of about seven and a half kilometres, releasing enough energy to rattle homes from Oakland to Richmond and to jolt scientific instruments tuned to detect the slightest movement. Within hours, smaller earthquakes rippled through the same segment of the fault, ranging from under magnitude 1 to magnitude 3. Each aftershock and microquake traced the hidden fractures running beneath Barclay and Piedmont, drawing a subterranean map of stress release that is still unfolding. The Hayward Fault is not just any fracture in the earth. It is considered by many geologists to be the single most dangerous fault in the United States, owing not only to its seismic potential, but also to the millions of people who live directly on or near its trace. Unlike the more famous San Andreas Fault, which lies further west, the Hayward slices directly through the urban heart of the East Bay. It runs north to south, cutting through Berkeley, Oakland, Hayward, Fremont and beyond, carving a path that seismologists often describe as a loaded gun pointed at the region. Geologically, the Hayward Fault is a right lateral strike-slip fault, meaning that when it moves, the ground on one side of the fault shifts horizontally past the other. This horizontal shearing is a result of the relentless northwestward motion of the Pacific Plate, grinding past the North American Plate. The boundary between these massive slabs of lithosphere is not one clean line but a network of interlaced faults, of which the Hayward is one of the most active and structurally complex. The recent quake sequence is a vivid reminder of how stress accumulates and is sporadically released along this boundary. When two tectonic plates are locked together, friction prevents smooth sliding. Strain builds silently over decades, even centuries, distorting the crust like a compressed spring. Eventually, the strength of the rocks is overcome and the fault slips suddenly, releasing stored elastic energy as seismic waves. The magnitude of the quake depends on how much of the fault ruptures and how far the blocks on either side slip. The Hayward Fault is notorious for being segmented, with portions that are creeping slowly and steadily while others are locked tight. Creep refers to the gradual movement that occurs without generating large earthquakes. In some sections, surveyors can measure sidewalks, curbs and even building foundations being offset by a few millimetres each year. This silent creep may relieve stress locally, but it also concentrates strain on adjacent locked sections. These locked segments are the real danger. They accumulate strain until it can only be released in a larger, damaging event. The quake that shook Berkeley on the 22nd of September was centred near one of these transitional areas. At coordinates roughly 37.86 degrees north and 122.25 degrees west, the rupture occurred at a depth consistent with the brittle crust where earthquakes typically nucleate. The sequence of aftershocks that followed, clustered within a few kilometres of each other, paints the picture of a fault patch adjusting after years of relative silence. The last time the Hayward Fault produced a major rupture was in the year 1868, when a quake estimated at magnitude 6.8 to 7 tore through the East Bay, levelling buildings in Hayward and damaging structures as far away as San Francisco. At that time, the population of the Bay Area was tiny compared to today, with only tens of thousands of residents. Now, over two million people live directly atop or adjacent to the fault trace, and the economic infrastructure of the region is orders of magnitude more complex. A repeat of that quake today could cause damage measured in the hundreds of billions of dollars. Scientists often refer to the Hayward Fault as a ticking time bomb. Paleoseismic trenching studies, where geologists dig across the fault and study layers of disrupted sediments, show that major earthquakes on the fault tend to occur at intervals of about 150 years on average. That clock has already run out, as it has been over 157 years since the 1868 event. 
The recent magnitude 4.3 quake is not nearly large enough to count as a release of this long accumulated strain. Instead, it may be a foreshock, a stress adjustment, or simply an isolated rupture. The difficulty is that the fault itself does not send clear warnings. It moves when it must, regardless of human timetables. The cluster of quakes within a 24-hour span is especially intriguing to seismologists. A magnitude 1.8 at a depth of nearly 7 kilometers, followed by a magnitude 3.0 only hours later in nearly the same location, suggests that the crust is highly stressed and that small fault patches are slipping in response to the initial rupture. These are not aftershocks in the classical sense, since their magnitudes and timings suggest they may be triggered slips rather than simple readjustments. Each event slightly changes the stress field, potentially bringing other sections of the fault closer to failure. One of the technical questions researchers are now investigating is whether the recent cluster represents triggered seismicity along a creeping section, or whether it indicates that a locked patch is beginning to destabilise. High-precision GPS and INSAR satellite radar measurements may reveal whether the ground surface is deforming subtly, providing clues about whether deep creep is occurring. Borehole seismometers and strain meters installed across the East Bay Hills will also provide high-frequency data that can distinguish between ordinary aftershock sequences and more worrisome foreshock cascades. The mechanics of the Haywood Fault are further complicated by its interactions with neighboring faults. To the north, it connects with the Rogers Creek Fault, which runs through wine country. There is geological evidence that these two faults may rupture together in a single event, creating an earthquake larger than either could produce alone. To the south, the Hayward merges with the Calaveras Fault, another active strike-slip system. The possibility of multi-fault ruptures has been demonstrated in modern seismic events, such as the 2016 Kaikoura earthquake in New Zealand, which leapt across multiple fault segments in a complex rupture sequence. If the Hayward and Rogers Creek faults were to break together, the resulting quake could reach magnitude 7.5 or higher, shaking the Bay Area far more violently than the earthquake of 1868. For now, the recent 4.3 quake is a reminder, not a catastrophe. But in geology, Reminders are not trivial. They are signals from the Earth's crust, messages written in seismic waves that the strain beneath the Bay Area continues to mount. Whether this latest tremor is just another footnote in the restless history of the Hayward Fault, or whether it is the first page of the next major chapter, remains to be seen. Scientists will continue to watch closely, measuring each microquake mapping each stress change, knowing that one day the silence will be broken not by a 4.3, but by a quake 10 or even 20 times larger. The Hayward Fault does not behave uniformly along its length. One of its most striking geological characteristics is the contrast between creeping segments and locked segments. The northern section near Berkeley shows signs of intermittent slip at the surface. Surveyors have documented offset curbs, displaced fences, and cracked foundations that have been creeping at a rate of a few millimetres each year. This creeping relieves a portion of the accumulated stress, but not enough to neutralise the danger. By contrast, other parts of the fault, particularly in the central and southern East Bay, appear to be largely locked. Locked segments are areas where friction prevents slip, even though tectonic forces are steadily pushing the two sides of the fault past one another. This locking is what allows enormous strain energy to accumulate, energy that can only be released through a sudden rupture. Think of it as a vice tightening silently, holding back stress until it finally snaps. When it does, the rupture propagates rapidly, breaking kilometres of fault length in seconds, with seismic waves radiating outward to shake cities, bridges and hillsides. Geophysical imaging and trenching studies suggest that the Hayward Fault has produced at least a dozen major earthquakes in the last 2,000 years. These events, detected in offset soil layers and disrupted sedimentary sequences, show a recurring cycle roughly every century and a half. The 1868 earthquake, which reached an estimated magnitude of 6.8 to 7, was only the most recent in this repeating series. 
Prior events occurred around 1695-1520, and earlier, each separated by about 150 years. The clock is ticking again, and seismologists warn that the Bay Area is already living on borrowed time. The potential size of the next Hayward Fault rupture is a subject of active research. A standalone rupture along the Hayward could produce an earthquake in the high magnitude 6 or low magnitude 7 range. However, the geological evidence that the Hayward Fault is directly connected to the Rogers Creek Fault increases the hazard. If both ruptured together in a cascading sequence, the combined rupture length could exceed 100 kilometers, releasing enough energy to generate a magnitude 7.4 to 7.5 quake. That would be nearly 10 times stronger than the quake of 1868, with shaking that could devastate infrastructure across the Bay Area. To understand why this is plausible, it helps to examine the stress transfer mechanisms at play. When a segment of fault ruptures, the stress at its edges changes dramatically. In some areas, stress is reduced, creating zones that are temporarily less likely to slip. In other areas, stress is increased, pushing neighboring segments closer to failure. This domino effect has been documented worldwide, and it is one reason why multi-fault ruptures are not only possible, but increasingly expected. Another complicating factor is the depth of the locked zones. The Hayward Fault is believed to be locked down to about 12 kilometers in the brittle crust. Beneath that, ductile flow in the hotter, more plastic rock absorbs some of the motion. This means that the seismogenic zone, the part of the crust capable of producing earthquakes, is roughly 12 kilometers thick. A rupture that extends along a large portion of the fault and through this entire depth range would release an enormous amount of energy. Scientists are also paying close attention to strain accumulation measured with GPS arrays. These networks show that the East Bay Hills are slowly moving relative to the flatlands, with strain rates consistent with a build-up toward a large earthquake. The question is not whether the strain is accumulating, but when and how it will be released. The recent magnitude 4.3 quake and its swarm of aftershocks are small flickers of release in a system under far greater pressure. The seismic hazard is compounded by the urban landscape. The Hayward Fault cuts directly through densely populated areas, including beneath schools, hospitals, and major transportation corridors. Unlike the San Andreas, which in many areas runs through rural or offshore zones, the Hayward Fault lies beneath a major metropolitan region. In addition to shaking, the fault poses a rupture hazard, meaning the ground itself could offset several feet horizontally during the next large quake. Pipelines, power lines and railways that cross the fault would be sheared apart instantly. The scenario most feared by emergency planners is a magnitude 7-plus event rupturing the Hayward Fault. Models show violent shaking across the East Bay, with liquefaction possible in low-lying reclaimed areas near the bay shoreline. Ground rupture would slice through neighbourhoods while landslides could sweep down unstable slopes in the Berkeley and Oakland Hills. Aftershocks would continue for months compounding damage and hampering recovery. The economic cost could rival or exceed any natural disaster in United States history. It is worth recalling that the 1868 earthquake struck when the Bay Area was sparsely populated, yet it still caused widespread destruction. Wooden buildings in Hayward collapsed, and brick structures in San Francisco cracked and fell. Telegraph lines were severed, isolating communities. Now imagine the same earthquake striking today when millions of people live atop the fault and billions of dollars in infrastructure depend on its stability. Despite decades of research, scientists cannot predict the exact timing of the next major quake. What they can do is refine probability estimates. Current models suggest that there is about a 1 in 3 chance of a magnitude 6.7 or larger earthquake on the Hayward Fault within the next 30 years. That probability is among the highest for any fault in California. The magnitude 4.3 quake this week does not change that forecast significantly, but it does serve as a stark reminder that the fault is active, stressed and capable of movement at any time. When the ground shook in Berkeley, many residents felt only a brief jolt and then went about their day. But beneath their feet, the earth was sending a message. 
It was a reminder of the relentless tectonic forces grinding silently along the Pacific North American boundary. It was a signal that the strain accumulated over one and a half centuries has not disappeared, and it was a warning that the silence of the Hayward Fault is not safety but suspense. The quake of September 22nd may soon be forgotten by those who experienced it. But for geologists and seismologists, it is another data point in the unfolding story of one of the world's most closely watched faults. They know that the question is not if the Hayward Fault will rupture again, but when. They know that when it does, the quake will dwarf the memory of this week's tremor. And they know that every small quake is another reminder that the clock is still ticking. So the Bay Area waits, with instruments monitoring every shiver of the crust, with planners drafting scenarios for the inevitable, and with residents carrying on life atop one of the most dangerous faults on the planet. The earth beneath their feet has spoken again, softly this time, but perhaps not for long. And now, if you found this video insightful, make sure to like, share and subscribe and tap that hype icon to help this video be discovered by others who need to understand the risks hiding beneath the Bay Area. Because knowledge and awareness might be the only warning we ever get before the Hayward Fault unleashes its full force.